So you're excited to hunt deer and elk in Idaho, but where do you go? This is the second video in a series of digital scouting tutorials that will take you from A to Z in finding a new area and creating a plan for success on your next Idaho hunt. In the first tutorial, we used the Idaho Hunting Seasons and Rules booklet, Harvest Statistics, and Idaho Fish and Games Hunt Planner to choose a unit and season to hunt, identify publicly accessible land, and find road and trail access within our unit. In this tutorial, we will teach you about understanding ideal habitats for deer and elk, how to identify deer and elk habitat using topographic and satellite imagery maps, how to identify terrain to aid in efficient hiking, determine where to drive and where to search for animals, how to employ Google Earth and Google Maps for digital scouting, and suggest a few additional mapping resources you may want to consider. Now let's look at planning your hunt and asking the right questions to end up with all the right answers we'll need to be successful. Ask yourself, where can I drive to? Where should I park? What are my physical capabilities, including how much weight can I carry? How far can I hike? And how many feet of elevation can I hike up and then back down? And will I reasonably be able to pack out an animal? Having a clear understanding of these questions and your answers is the next step in narrowing your personal scouting process. And as we begin studying maps and hunting locations, your answers will guide the areas that you'll want to focus on. Now let's talk about the animals. Deer and elk live in places where the habitat meets their basic needs. Three of those basic needs are food, water, and cover. The better the habitat, it's likely the more animals that will live there. Now, there are a lot of variables that affect habitat, and we're not going to be able to see all of those things from digital maps and satellite images. But knowing that deer and elk can be found in every region of Idaho, we can establish some habitat basics that will get us pointed in the right direction. Deer and elk find their food from an assortment of plants in their respective habitats. So, in places where it's visible that plenty of grass, flowers, bushes, and the like are growing, that's a good start. They will travel miles daily for water if necessary, but ideally, they like to have a variety of drinking options and sources close by. So, keeping rivers, lakes, streams, ponds, springs and such in mind is important. Also consider that with seasonality, some water sources may run dry or freeze over. So keep that in mind. Cover can mean a lot of different things, but basically it means areas that the animals feel like they can hide. Now this can range from boulders to thick brush or tall grass, steep terrain with places to drop out of sight, and of course, trees and thick forested areas. Deer and elk like mixed terrain and surroundings. That means not a sheer mountain peak or cliff, nor totally flat field. Mixed terrain, think of features of the landscape, may include a combination of timber pockets, meadows, rocky outcroppings, sagebrush slopes and flats, or brushy patches and timber clear cuts. These variations in terrain and cover give animals a place to run and hide called escapement. A mix of terrain will also offer places with more sun, like south facing slopes, and places with consistent shade, like northeast facing slopes with timber. The places in between often have just the right mix for plenty of plants to thrive and serve as food for deer and elk. As we look at these places, we'll want to imagine ourselves hunting there. And if what we're looking at offers other features ideal for hunting, 
such as tree lines. Deer and elk really like tree lines. It's kind of like getting to have feet on both sides of the fence, so to speak, meaning that they can see far and move easily on the open side, yet quickly jump into the trees and shade to hide or escape. Now, can we find places like these from our computer screen? A lot of them, to some degree, yes. With the help of Google Earth and its archive of satellite imagery, we can browse and explore Idaho's big game habitat in amazing detail. Google Earth allows us to see features of the landscape that can help us get an idea of what kinds of habitat are in our unit. We've gone here to the Idaho Fish and Game Hunt Planner and downloaded the Google Earth layers for the game management units. Many of these useful layers on the Hunt Planner can be downloaded for your computer or device to aid in your digital scouting or while in the field. And as we look closer at the unit we plan to hunt, let's follow our path of questions we asked at the beginning and prepare a hypothetical scouting trip. Starting with where we plan to drive. Using the Idaho Fish and Game Hunt Planner's Map Center and the Roads and Trails layer, we've identified roads in our unit that are open during our season. And by doing our digital homework now, we can accelerate our process of learning about the area before we even get there. Getting started in Google Earth, check your sidebar menu to make sure that you have this terrain box checked. Then use these buttons or your mouse roller to zoom in and out. By using these buttons up here on the corner, we can really fly around. And this dial here to spin and the arrows on this eyeball to look up and down and around. Zoom all the way in and you enter what's called ground level view, which is really great for in-person perspectives. Also notice this info down here in the bottom. This gives us data of what our eye elevation is, as well as the elevation if our mouse cursor were flat on the ground. And here with the path tool, we can chart a detailed path on the ground. Say for example, if we wanted to understand what hiking from this parking place to the top of this knob would entail. We can then name and save this path. Head over to the left sidebar info, select our example one path, then by right clicking, and viewing elevation profile, we can really understand the total distance, the total elevation, and rate of climbing. Including this in your digital scouting is important for the physical preparation of your hunt and knowing what you need to be prepared for ahead of time. Another great feature of Google Earth is the timeline. From here, we can view snapshots of when the images we're looking at were taken. Now, this can be very helpful to reveal seasonal changes of an area. The dates of image captures vary from location to location, so it may be a toss-up as to what dates and seasons you'll be able to toggle through, simply depending on where you are viewing. Some areas have images that were taken during the fall, and you'll be able to see how much of the vegetation is deciduous by the changing color of the leaves. Here we have images from October, and we can see that snow is possible. And with snow comes tracks. There is a good chance the tracks we're looking at way up here this time of year are from elk. Having this kind of proof that critters are in the area is priceless in your effort to locate places to hunt from your desk. And speaking of elk, 
There are even times you can actually find visible elk here in the archives of satellite imagery. By clicking back and forth on the timeline, you can detect the presence then disappearance of animals like these groups here, which are quite possibly cow and calf elk. Another characteristic of the landscape is wildfire. Burned areas can provide diversity to the surroundings and at times during the regrowth years afterward can really attract deer and elk to forage on the young plant life that sprouts there. So it's absolutely worth taking note of areas that have recently burned. Sometimes a cleaner view is helpful and just going back to basics is productive. With this button here, we are able to jump over to the same location, but now opened in Google Maps. We'll want to select map here and then terrain in this menu. Topographical or topo maps like this use lines and in this case shading too to illustrate steepness of the ground. The closer lines are together, the steeper the terrain. Regular topo maps quickly translate the lay of the land and elevation. This can be nice to see just how steep or flat an area is when all the vegetation of satellite or Google Earth imagery can distract from and even block a lot of that visibility. So don't hesitate to survey the areas you're scouting with both satellite and topo perspectives. As you explore your unit and come to learn more about it, you'll discover features you'll want to remember. So be sure to save what you're learning so you can take it with you. This is when third-party apps and services can be great to access the maps and saved points on your phone or GPS device. Much of Idaho's hunting landscape is outside cell phone service. So using a phone app to access this data and watch your GPS location and navigate between waypoints can be priceless out in the field and off the grid. Additional free and paid services are available that can make a lot of this digital scouting mobile and accessible on your phone. Apps such as OnX Maps, Go Hunt Maps, Hunt Stand, Scout Look Hunting, Quiver, and Powder Hook are popular. Any of these, along with the GPS features of your smartphone, can show your exact location and be very useful when navigating private lands, marking or reaching location waypoints, and keeping track of exactly where you've been and where you're going in real time, and where you parked the truck. Detailed maps can be downloaded and saved to your phone, so even when you are in areas without cell phone service, all your stored data will still be there and accessible. Now let's take a virtual tour of the road access in your unit. From this road, there is a great view of these canyons with ample places you could park and spend some time using binoculars or a spotting scope called glassing to cover a lot of ground with your eyes instead of your feet. When we find places here online that offer great views and we want to see it in person, we can pin and mark these locations here from our computer screen to guide our upcoming scouting trips. Much of Idaho is steep and rugged terrain, but a few tips can help keep your foot travel manageable. Variations in terrain can create areas where animal traffic will increase. Let's start with ridges. Ridges are excellent places to watch for deer and elk. They are also great places to walk yourself. So consider ridges something like imaginary roads that both you and the animals can utilize for efficient travel. 
Next are saddles. Saddles are places that a ridge dips or has a low spot. And these low spots are often magnets for animals to travel through. Think of them as gates and fences. It's where animals will often choose to cross when moving from one side of a ridge to another. You'll want to take note of major saddles like this one, both for charting your own movements, but also to look for trails and expect actual game. So let's pin or mark a waypoint here. Other natural pinch points, including cliffs, rock slides, and bodies of water, are also features of the landscape that will concentrate animal traffic. These are all ideal places to inspect for sign, as well as to sit and watch while hunting. We'll want to take note of clearings like this, as when in heavily wooded areas, Openings like these provide both visibility for spotting game, but can also be prime locations for the types of plants that deer and elk may browse. Notice how these south-facing slopes are much more open, while these facing the north are thick with trees and vegetation. These southern-facing areas will be good to watch in early mornings and evenings when animals most often graze while the shady north faces more likely will be serving as bedding areas throughout the day. Another thing to pin when you discover are game trails. It's often in the steepest areas that animals follow each other's steps over time, eventually forming trails. So when looking at steep and rocky slopes, Zoom in close and look for trails like this. If trails are there, there will also be tracks and the animals themselves. So take note of clues like these. Keep an eye out for visible water, especially springs, wallows, or seeps, often accompanied by patches of green vegetation, especially in the dry season images. In high elevation canyon country, Water locations where animals don't have to drop all the way to a stream or river in the bottom of the canyon are prime. Now that we've digitally scouted specific areas, there are additional ways we can make the most of our preseason preparation and narrow the funnel for where our Idaho hunting trips will unfold. A few other features worth trying include the show sunlight button here. This allows us to see how the sun and shadows move over the landscape that you are looking at, even specific to dates, so you can know exactly when the sun will shine or shade will fall on any given area. Useful info to plan around. As slopes heat in the morning sun, the air will shift from falling to rising thermal updrafts. Similarly, in the evening, as hillsides begin to shade, the cooling air will drop down slope. This is important as you hunt to make sure you know where and when the direction of your scent will shift and you can plan your hunts accordingly throughout the changing conditions of the day. And this ruler tool that calculates actual distance from point to point following the ground Super cool to quickly gauge how far away places you're looking at are. Okay, we've determined the access roads we can drive and park along in our unit, learned how to chart a path to hike and understand how long and steep it will be. We've pinned and saved areas to glass and ridges to watch, along with saddles, pinch points, water sources, and game trails to investigate. We are well on our way to planning a successful scouting trip. If you enjoyed this tutorial about do-it-yourself digital scouting in Idaho, please share this with someone. And stay tuned for our next video in the series, Boots on the Ground, as we take a look at actually getting out there, physical signs to look for, and getting our eyes on animals as we head out for your in-person preseason scouting.